from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 54. Today, I'm going to have you employ your imagination. See what you can understand in the following video, and most importantly, what you feel at the end of it. Here's the video. You're deep in the forest, warmed by the campfire and your friends. You share stories of outdoor adventures, the unbelievable beauty of the high country, and a few scary stories as well. You excuse yourself from the campfire and lay down to take in the sky on this full moon night. As you watch the clouds skim across the face of the moon, you fade into a deep, contented sleep. All is silent. And then... You bolt awake, your heart racing. You look out at the mountains. You hear it, the distant howl the reply to the wolf just on the edge of your campsite. Your blood is ice water. Oh, there's raw fear, but there's also an overpowering wonder as well. Something deep in you knows this song and knows that it's right. Did you follow what happened in the video? Were you left with a feeling of chill or fear or wonder? I can't honestly say that I've had the experience you just imagined, but I had one that got my heart pumping, the hairs on my back standing up, and a sense of wonder and even awe. It wasn't from a wolf, it was from a coyote. I was camping in Hell's Canyon in eastern Oregon, and I was startled awake in my tent by the howling of a coyote just on the other side of the tent wall. I was instantly alert. Something ancient in me was awakened. Then I heard it, the distant answer. A coyote in the distance howled back, and my whole being flushed with a feeling of wonder. Well, animals can do that for us. The Native Americans in the West had the coyote in the center of their cosmology. Native Americans had a place of connection with wolves as well. There was respect and admiration. Now this contrasted with the European viewpoint of the same animal. Wolves were fearful, even seen as evil and sinful. In European folklore, the wolf was the bad guy, the enemy to be overcome, the consumer of Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother, and it was the blower down of the house inhabited by those three little pigs. Well, when Europeans came to the New World, they were vexed by wolves running free. As they pushed west, they were alarmed by the wolf packs. Wolves were shot on sight. When that wasn't enough, money was offered for dead wolves, and the killing escalated. By the early years of the 20th century, wolves were a rare sight in most states, and by 1927, the last wolf was seen in Oregon. Their place in the ecosystem was left vacant. Only Minnesota, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Alaska, and Canada harbored wolves. Only a few lucky people ever heard their howls in the local, lower 48 states. 
So did the wolf teach man to hunt, or was it the other way around? What moved either of them to share the meat from the hunt? Well, we may never know the answer to those questions, but the dogs we care so much about today came from wolves, and yet wolves remained free. They kept their ways of hunting and even keeping their distance from people. The state of Oregon was not alone in exterminating wolves from their land. Even in the national parks, the wolves disappeared by some form of violence. But the Congress of bygone days made some wise decisions, and by those decisions, the government decided to reintroduce gray wolves into Yellowstone National Park. Wolves from Canada were released in the park. Their packs grew and then divided as nature intended. Soon wolves were in Idaho, then in eastern Oregon along the Imnaha River. These first Oregon wolves were named the Imnaha Pack, and each pup joined who was born to the pack was given a number by scientists studying the pack. The seventh wolf born was given the name OR7. The OR stands for Oregon, and the seven was the birth order. It's in this Eastern Oregon pack that our story begins. One wolf from the Imnaha pack left his home on an epic journey that took him across Oregon through our part of the state and into California. He became the first wolf in California in almost 100 years. And his great trek didn't end there. It's a great story, and all of it's documented. It's all true. And there's some mystery about it as well. Let's learn about it in this video. October 2011. OR7, a two-year-old male wolf, leaves the Imaha Pack in Northeast Oregon and heads south. It is the beginning of an epic journey that will encompass 2,000 miles and two states. Now, for the first time, witness the adventure of OR7's incredible journey. OR7 went right through your property. I went, whoa, that's so cool. It was a harbinger of good news that, you know, our, our ecosystem here and our forest is, is healthier simply by his presence. Satellite imagery showed that the wolf came through our compounds and buildings. California is ready for wolves. I think it's inevitable that other wolves will follow OR7 and, and follow that same general corridor uh, through, through the state of Oregon. As this magnificent species struggles to regain a foothold in North America, OR7 leads the way to California. OR7, the journey starts now. 